Welcome back inside the Boeing Center at the Tech Port in San Antonio, where Jesse Bam Rodriguez is officially a two-division world champion. Chris Mannix joined by Sergio Moore and Eddie Hearn, the promoter of this event. Eddie, Jesse is now a 112-pound champion, but he had to work for it in this fight tonight against Christian Gonzalez. What did you think of his performance? Good performance. I mean, you know, we, we found out after the fight that he broke his jaw in the sixth round. He did well to hide that. Um, it's obviously a painful injury and a disappointing injury with what we wanted to plan for this summer now because I guess he's going to go to hospital and see what has to be done to that operation-wise. Gonzalez was tricky and awkward and difficult. He switched a lot and I think he lost a little bit of desire. Started the fight quite well and ambitiously but got the, the sort of uh, the ambition punched out of him in the middle stages of the rounds and then I thought went into survival mode in the back end of the fight, which made it very difficult for Jesse. Cut him off well, worked the body well, but just an awkward opponent, really, to, to get the win. But pleased he did. Very disappointed with the injury, because that's really going to set a fighter back. And we see that quite a lot lately with this broken jaw, you know, the operation and the recovery that comes with it. So that's disappointing. Hopefully it's not too long, but he needs to move into those big unification fights now, because I feel like if a fighter as good as Jesse stays at that level for too long, you know, it's going to be hard to see the best of them. Sergio, how much more impressive was Jesse's performance knowing now that he fought the second half of the fight with a broken jaw? Well, that's what great fighters do. I mean, I think about, you know, broken jaws. Of course, Muhammad Ali, Joe Frazier comes to mind. But also when um, Arthur Abraham fought Edison Miranda, I mean, mm. that's what champions do. They got to gut it out and fight a way to win. Bam Rodriguez did that tonight. It wasn't the knockout we wanted. It wasn't as impressive. But having to fight through that, that's what champions do. So he gutted it out like a champion. That's all that matters. He won. Eddie, I know it's early, but now that it looks like Jesse will be out for a while, how does that reshake your plans for the 112-pound division? Well, I mean, you know, we really want to get those unifications rolling. You have Delakian. He's a WBA champion. You've got Sonny Edwards, of course, with us now and the zone. You've got Julio Cesar Martinez, who has somewhat of a routine defense on May the 6th in Guadalajara. Hopefully, he can turn around quickly. And we There's can absolutely do... nothing routine about anything Julio Cesar no, that's Martinez true. does. Or him, <laughs> or him turning up. Okay, yes. But, you know, I think that really, and same with him, everybody wants to get in these big fights now. But Sonny Edwards will box in June or July, wherever it is, whether that's Delakian, whether that's Martinez, or whether that's a voluntary defense. I don't want to give these guys too many voluntary defenses. You know, you're going to see the best of them in those big unification fights. Martinez needs a unification fight. Sonny needs a unification fight. So does Bam now. But, you know, subject to, to what we hear in the hospital tonight, I'm thinking Bam's going to be out till autumn winter for sure. Uh, Eddie, you promoted the MJ Akhmedali of Daniel Roman fight from three years ago. Akhmedali won his two titles by split decision over Roman. He loses them in the ring tonight against Marlon Tapales again by split decision. Uh, that was not the MJ Akhmedaliyev I'm used to seeing over the last few years. No, I mean, the MJ in the final championship rounds there was, but early in the fight, he was very tentative. I mean, we were just talking off air, you know. I felt he won the fight, but, you know, when you leave so much to the, to the judges in the first half of the fight, and it frustrates the life out of me. I see so often that a fighter will allow an opponent to gain rounds or gain an advantage in the first half of the fight. I feel like the corner's got to wake you up after two or three rounds. I know it's difficult because the fight is unfolding, but you can see that. You, you could see that he needed to do more. You know, he was standing in front of him. He was fainting. He was moving, but he wasn't throwing shots. And then he was getting his head picked back by jabs. You know, Tapales was, was jabbing beautifully with a double jab, even a triple jab at times. And he stole a lot of those early rounds. And it was really frustrating. But I had MJ winning probably 9, 10, 11, 12 to close it out. But again, like... Well, I, I agree with you with the corner, Eddie. Uh, they should have really got on him because, they're, you know, I've had two draws. I, I still regret my Shane Mosley draw because I, I got on my too. trainer. I got on my me trainer too. saying, why didn't you tell me? Uh, I should have. Yes, they should have urged them more to to, to, to start start earlier, get it going. But you got to give Tapala some credit as well. Box well. Box he well boxed early. well. He had a strategy. He pulled it out to the end. So it was a little bit of the corner, and it was a lot having to do with uh, Tapala as well. Could you see Eddie kind of the money flying away for that <laughs> in a way fight. Did you see that kind of floating into the ether? To be honest with you, Chris, I don't really want to talk about it. <laughs> <laughs> that's boxing, it's right? It's only that's, money. That's what happens. <laughs> um, a bright side of this undercard for you, Raymond Ford, oh, in yeah. a massive step-up fight for him against Jesse Magd Magdaleno, a former title holder at a division lower. Uh, that was a fight that you know people around Raymond Ford were nervous about coming in, but in his biggest and toughest test to date, I thought he put forth his best performance. Yeah, I mean, to show you how good Raymond Ford is, 
he was disappointed with his mm -hmm. performance mm -hmm. and the fact that he didn't stop him. He basically won every round of the fight, right? In a fight that a lot of people were tipping Magdalena, a lot of people were saying it was too early. Uh, you know, if this kid fought Maurizio Lara right now, styles make fights, I think he's going to be really difficult to beat. I, I agree. mean, Magdaleno is strong. You know, he tried to walk him down. He tried to, you know, Ford frustrated him. He showed great feet. The jab was sharp. He hurt him repeatedly in the fight. And I think Maurizio Lara is the best featherweight in the world. But I tell you what, I think Ray's going to be really difficult to beat. And it's the confidence that, that he has. You go to fighters like Sonny Edwards, the same. They just think they're unbeatable. You know, he, he had no fear in there tonight. That opponent never phased him in the slightest. He was so convinced he, won, he would win that fight comfortably. And he went and did it. Ray Ford, that's the best I've seen him. I mean, uh, Grisham, Todd Grisham asked me what I gave him. I said, I plus performance. Just because he didn't get the stoppage doesn't mean he still didn't do everything. He got the, the he won the rounds. He was firing on all cylinders. He got the knockdown against a former champion. That's all that matters. You know, sometimes you don't need to get a knockout just to put the cherry on top. It was still a brilliant performance, and that's the best I've seen him, and he's going to be hard to beat. And I feel like that power's coming. I mean, he hurt Magdaleno with his timing tonight. But you look at those fighters out of that same kind of school, Keyshawn Davis, Shakur Stevenson. Mm -hmm. You know, Shakur Stevenson, when he was featherweight, he was super bantamweight coming up, he never really looked like he had any power. Mm -hmm. Now he's moving up and, and growing through the divisions. He's actually looking like a bit of a puncher. You know, you saw him get the stoppage tonight. And I think that will come with Ray as well. You know, and if, if he starts carrying that power and believing in his power, he's going to be difficult to beat. Still very green, really, in the pro ranks. And they but haven't really... Uh, grew into their man strength either. No. I mean, these are kids that are still in their, you know, er, early 20s. You know, so. Ray Ford has told us he's in a rush to get mm. a 126-pound title shot. Feels he's growing out of that weight class. You've got Lee Wood and Mauricio Lara in the rematch on the 27th. Did uh, Ray Ford do enough to get the winner of that fight? Because you've been talking Josh Warrington. No. Ray Ford no. was not shy about saying no, what his thoughts no, on Warrington. because at the end of the day, fights are made for a number of reasons. Fights are made because of the size of the fight, the draw of the fight, and fights are made because fighters have earned that opportunity and, and got in that position. At the moment, we need to build Ray Ford. He's not a big enough name. He, you know, you can't compare the likes of Lara against Warrington in a 25,000 stadium or Lee Wood in Manchester Arena with 20,000 people to Ray Ford. Ray is going to be one of those guys that people don't really want to fight. And you're going to get to a position that he's going to have to get into that mandatory position and force the champions to get the shot. There's a very interesting situation with the WBA where you've got Kolmatov, who's an Uzbekistan fighter, very, very dangerous, really avoided. And he's now the mandatory for the WBA. You may get a situation with someone like Ray Ford where a champion vacates the belt not to face a Komatov because there's no value in the fight and you end up getting Ray Ford against Komatov for the, for the vacant title. It's going to be difficult for Ray to carve out that shot. That's our job. But tonight was a massive step and there's not really many levels beyond Jesse Magdaleno before you fight for a world title. So he's now number three. He was number three in the WBA. I think he'll go to two and he's got to force that mandatory position because I don't think... Many people are going to look at Ray Ford with that style, you know, and that slickness and I go, agree. yeah, let, let's fight Ray Ford in a voluntary. All right, so we got the big schedule coming up. You've been very bullish on what's coming up over the next couple of months. Give me the one fight or fighter you're most excited to see quickly over the next, next month. I mean, Taylor Cameron in Ireland is going to be so special. You have two fights there in two weeks, one in Guadalajara at a homecoming and one in Dublin, the homecoming. Both probably the, the two best atmospheres you'll ever seen. To be honest with you, of all the schedule coming up, Lara Wood rematch as well, and of course Tank against Garcia, but of our stuff, I really like Joe Caldina against Rakimov, you know, in Cardiff. Joe Caldina lost his title unfairly without losing. Rakimov won it in Abu Dhabi, knocking out Zelfa Barrett. I think that's a tremendous fight, April 22nd. Great card, so loads of big stuff, but I'm really looking forward to two weeks' time seeing Joe Caldina back in the, win, in the ring, trying to become a two-time world champion, having won the belt, a year ago and never lost it. So it's a quick turnaround, but a great fight there and just a tremendous schedule. You know, I know our job is to blow our trumpet, but when you look at it on paper, so, you know, we've added Clarissa Shields to the schedule tonight as well. And uh, just a, a fantastic schedule coming up. Canelo Alvarez, of course, we just had Anthony Joshua. Tank Garcia, what a fight. Um, so Lee, you say name one and you name like 50. Well, it's so right difficult. Isn't it? <laughs> Eddie Hearn, like ladies and gentlemen. I felt like it was an Eddie opportunity Hearn. just to let everyone know the schedule again yeah, and how good it was not and how much value for money you wonderful design subscribers. Sergio, see if you can do it a little briefer. You're, the fight that you're looking forward <laughs> to the most is what? Uh, um, 
Or don't even I, think I, about I, it. Katie <laughs> Taylor. <laughs> Katie Taylor in her hometown. I think she deserves it. Mm. She got to the point where she's a uh, pound-for-pound pound number one fighter uh, in her hometown. I think everything, the stars aligned for her. But who are you picking, Tank or Ryan? I hope we just get to see a great fight, but I'm picking Tank. He changed his mind. Like I'm going for I, Ryan Garcia I, now. I picked Tank the entire yeah, time. You want, you got a By the way, when we talk about I said Cordina Rakimov, that's on the same night. Yeah. What, what a day and night it's of boxing. Like incredible. <laughs> Do you want me to talk anymore? <laughs> no, we're good, Eddie. Okay, I think okay, we can okay. wrap it up right here. April 22nd, huge night in boxing. Rakimov versus the Cordina over in the U.K. You got Tank Ryan here in the U.S., which you can see on DAZN and DAZN pay-per-view. Guys, we will see you on the 22nd.